Hey guys, Dr. Nan here. Uh, today I'm really excited to do this video. So a lot of you guys um, you know, have been asking what resources uh, I've been using with the kids. And today I'm going to review uh, for the first, very first book uh, that I got, which is the Horizons uh, Kindergarten Math Book. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, uh, Dr. Theodore Naomi, a you know, full-time board-certified plastic surgeon who's also an early an advocate of early childhood education. So got two wonderful children, uh, a daughter who's now uh, five years old uh, at the recording of this video. And at five, she is technically in kindergarten, but um, on a math level, she's anywhere between you know, fourth and fifth grade uh, comfortably. Um, I have a uh, four-year-old son who just turned four, and um, he is you know, in preschool, um, but you know, on a math level, he's probably between first and second grade. So you know, uh, this is this video is based on my early experience with them when I start first started teaching um, them. You know, I am a plastic surgeon. I'm not a teacher. Um, so when I first started, I was looking for a resource that would help me uh, get going, and I did a lot of research and you know, watch some videos uh, like you guys are watching, and I hope to kind of help you know provide the the knowledge so that you guys can make a decision about which kindergarten book. Uh, so without further ado, I will get into it. So this is the Horizons um, uh, kindergarten book. You know, one of the reasons I looked in the Horizons is because the Horizons has a, a good track record. Um, they have books both in reading and phonics and in math, and it's one of the curriculums that most people um, start with or can go to. So that's one of the things that really drew me to uh, Horizons. Um, the book comes as a set. Uh, there's a teacher's guide and then there's book one and book two. Okay. I didn't use a teacher's guide. I've now subsequently you know, picked up the teacher's guide and I don't think you really need it since most of the material in the book is kindergarten level material that most people can teach. So if you feel inclined to get the teacher's guide or if you feel like you know, it's going to help you teach, then obviously get that. Struggle with the teacher guy for me is, you know, when you're teaching the material, you're trying to actually get the child to understand. Sometimes it takes more time to go through the teacher's guide to figure out what they tell you to do and then translate that to what the child's actually doing as opposed to looking at material and trying um, best to explain it. Well, the other thing that I really loved about this book is it's standalone. So I've had some other resources where in order to use a book, you need some tools, you need some manipulatives. This book is all you really need, which I've really liked about this. Um, and it made it easy to use, especially if you're out and about, or if you say you go on vacation and you just want to throw one book in, in the bag. Um, so I thought that was really good. Uh, Price-wise, so the price of this book, you see if the back has it here, uh, it's not listed here, but it depends on where you get it. And this is not one of the cheaper uh, curriculums or, or books you can get. Um, but because of the track record that Horizons has built, um, it can sort of command that price. And places I would think about getting it, um, first place is always Amazon. Amazon allows you to buy it with the teacher's guide as book one and book two. You can buy them individually. Um, you know, at the end of this video, what I'm going to do is actually do another video where I flip through the book. Um, this seems like would make sense, but trust me. You know, after buying so many books, I wish somebody would have given me a video where I could flip through the book and actually preview it and see whether it was the right book and the right fit uh, for my kids. So I'll, I'll do that in a separate video. So if you like this video, uh, feel free to go to that video and check that out. That way you can actually see what's actually in the book uh, for yourself uh, and get a feel for whether it's an appropriate book um, for your kids or not. Um, with that said, you know, the book itself um, does not have a table of contents. And so when you flip through, one of the things that I always look for when I'm trying to find a book is a table of content. The reason I think the table of content is so important is it gives you a guide for what materials are gonna be covered um, throughout the entire book. Um, this one is based on something called a spiral method. So the Horizons book is based on a spiral method, meaning that the lessons are not in any particular order. They're grouped together based on how Horizons thinks you should do math, but they're not in any particular order. And so because they're not in any particular order, um, they start with a topic and then they move along and then they spiral back to it and then they review it. Okay. And then at the end, I'll talk about sort of pros and cons and 
talk about why I think that may be um, challenging. But just so you know, there's no table of content, okay? Let me jump into some of what I really enjoyed about the book. So just for starters, uh, when I first opened this book and showed it to my daughter, um, so I, you know, I started you know, this with her when she was, gosh, about maybe two and a half to three years old. Uh, she was writing pretty early. Um, she loved the colors. They do a great job of incorporating pictures um, and colors, and just making it really fun, you know? And so I thought that was just a really, really nice thing to have. Um, the lessons as you first start out are well spaced out. The font is big. There isn't a lot on, on, the, on the same uh, page. Uh, so I thought they really did a great job with that, especially when you're starting out uh, with young kids. You don't want something that is just all black and white print. It looks intimidating. So I thought they really did a good job of keeping it kind of fun um, throughout. The other thing that this book uh, was really good for, and this may be a pro for you or may not be a uh, pro for you, is it incorporates a lot of writing, okay? So in, within it, you know, even at the kindergarten level, there's a lot of writing. And this is you know, my, uh, my daughter's book, and the nice thing about the writing is, you know, you can see their writing at the very beginning. Um, here she's trying to write a two. And then at the end of the book, you can look back through and then show them the progress that they've made. So here's the same two um, at the very end. And so it's great that um, it incorporates that writing. That's great if you have a child who's capable of writing. On the other hand, if you don't have a child who's doing very much writing, that in itself may be a challenge for them uh, as far as using this, this book, and it may slow them down because they may get the material conceptually, but they may not be able to move forward um, until they have the writing piece of it down. The other little thing I loved about this book is the edges are perforated, okay? It doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you have a perforated edges, it allows you to tear the book, photocopy it, and then have your child work on it. And then it, later on, if you decide to have them do it again, you can you know, have them repeat that, okay? Some books don't have that. And so as you're trying to tear, it, it comes off you know, in kind of the jagged format. So I love the fact that you could um, you know, tear it and has the, 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 the perforated edges. Um, you know, overall, this book I think is great. I would say the Horizons curriculum tends to be a little bit more advanced in the sense that you know, for a kindergarten book, there was a lot of material in here that was probably between kindergarten and first grade, okay? Um, by the end of the book, you essentially are doing, you know, almost pretty close to um, double-digit um, edition. You know, it's at least double-digit double with single-digit edition. Um, the book itself is advanced, you know, and I, I, if you have a child who's advanced, it's great. You don't have a child who's advanced that may be a little bit more intimidating um, but I did like the fact that they weren't holding back in their book now to talk about some of the cons okay the hard part about this book um, is the fact that it's a spiral method okay so because the the lessons aren't organized in sequence if you wanted to just work on say addition there isn't a section on addition where you can just do addition okay You'd have to basically do some addition, do some time, do some money, and then come back to addition. So based on that, what I ended up finding was that, you know, when we were on a topic in order to use this book, I would have to basically skip some of the lessons we haven't learned yet to get to all the addition, then backtrack, um, and then do the time. And so from an organizational standpoint, it, it wasn't that great, but it, that makes it a good book for a review. Okay, so it, once a child's gotten certain materials out, it makes it a great book for review, but not a great book for actually teaching material because there aren't enough examples in a sequential fashion for your child to master that topic um, because it's kind of organized in a very spiral uh, method. Um, that was one of the first cons. Um, you know, I think the other thing about it is the book is very dependent on the number line system. Okay, so... You know, my daughter uh, never really caught onto the number line. You know, she'd rather just use manipulatives or counter fingers than use the number line. A lot of the lessons are based on the number line, okay? So if you have a child who likes the number line, gets the number line, wants to use the number line, then it's a much easier book for them. 
if you have a child who does not get the number line, and I'll show you guys what I mean by the number line um, for those that don't know. So this is the number line, okay? So if you have a child who does not really think through like the number line where they're gonna look at five and then jump to six or seven, then this may be a little harder for them to use because a lot of the lessons are based on the number line. The other side of that too is once the number line is there and kids know how to use it, they can become a little dependent on that number line. And then even for things that they should know or should think through, they're always kind of using the number line because it's easier. And so you, you almost have to kind of be careful um, of getting them too exposed to that number line um, to the point where that's all they want to depend on. Right? Um, where do I see this book as far as fitting into a curriculum? Okay. If you're starting, I would say this is a good book to check out. I would recommend getting just book one for starters. If you like book one and how it's going, then you can add book two. I don't think the teacher's guide is necessary at the kindergarten level. For other levels, it may be necessary, but at the kindergarten level, I certainly don't think it's an absolute. Because of the way this book is organized in a spiral method, it's good to introduce teaching. It's very colorful, but it isn't the best book to teach one topic to then move on to the next topic and the next topic. And that plays into why there is no table of content, okay? So it's not like you can look and say, okay, this is the page that covers addition or subtraction, okay? So because of that, I think this is a great book for review, okay? And that's where I ended up using this book and I still use the Horizon books. Once I have taught, for example, a kindergarten curriculum and I have covered all the material that I need to cover, usually through another book, and I will review some of those other books and other videos, so feel free to stay tuned, then I will incorporate the Horizons book as a review. It's a great book because of the spiral method. It allows them to go back and revisit topics that they may not have done recently. So for example, if I'm teaching subtraction, but I want to make sure my kids haven't forgotten addition, that's when I break out this book and it gives the material in a spiral fashion so that they're encountering so many different types of material and allows me to also diagnose where they need additional help. And so if we're doing one topic, for example, say we're focusing on subtraction, focusing on subtraction, as you're focusing on subtraction, at times your child is forgetting all the other things that they've learned. And so this is a great book as an add-on so that once your child is doing other things and is getting that down, they can still keep in touch with the material that they've already vi revisited. And so now I use this book and the whole Horizon series for math mostly for review purposes. So as we're focusing on one topic, if I need a quick book where I can say, okay, let's just work on something, um, then I'll give my kids the Horizon book and then they'll work on it. It helps them review other things. And as I watch them work on this, if there are things that they're missing, um, if there are things that they're not quite getting that we've covered already, I then design new lesson plans in order to incorporate the Horizon, uh, in, in order to incorporate it. So in conclusion, um, you know, hope you guys have found this helpful. Uh, I'm going to review a lot of other books and tell you exactly where I, I fit it into my curriculum. Um, for those of you who are interested, feel free to leave me questions or comments. Please hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, I'm really excited to be doing a lot of this stuff. And as somebody who is not a teacher, uh, as I look at my life as a full-time plastic surgeon and, and think about how much I've been able to do with the kids, I'm encouraged to say that I think anybody can do a lot of this, but having the right guidance and the right tools are important. Um, after this video, I'm also gonna do a flip through video where I flip through the pages so you can actually see what the inside of the book is like. And that might be helpful for some of those who are deciding whether to buy this book or not. Thank you guys once again for joining me.